637 on Talk Radio 790 KABC. John Phillips broadcasting live from the Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington, D.C. And I've got to say that I'm not the only Californian who is sober here in Washington, D.C. because it's time to drink and go to the parties. I'm also not the only Californian that's out here freezing because it's very cold. And my fellow Californian who's sitting across the table from me right now is a woman you all know and love and follow on Twitter at Hey Tammy Bruce. Tammy Bruce. I think we're the only two Scots Irish people, maybe in the country, who haven't had a drink tonight. <laughs> that's very maybe, true. Maybe in the entire damn country. That's quite possible. But that's everyone right. here is drunk tonight. Well, except for the people around us. We are professionals. Yeah. And uh, so maybe we'll have to make up for it later on. But that's how politicians cut deals. They get in the parties and they get in the bars and they drink the cocktails and they make the deals. That's right. Smoke-filled rooms they used to be. Mm -hmm. What do you think the odds are the rent is too damn high guy is going to burst into the room here during the interview? I don't think he has to because we're here. We're taking care of things. <laughs> taking care we're of the taking rent. We're taking care of things. Have people seen your picture with him? Yes, I have it posted KBC.com and I tweeted I'm gonna it. I'm going to take off my shoe right now and show it uh -oh. to you. Yeah, no, I've, I've had enough of that today. I'm not going to show you my shoe. No, it's just going to be nailing me in the forehead if I That's right. say the wrong thing. That's right. So we had we heard from Mitt Romney earlier today. He gave the big speech. It was him and uh, Ron Paul, the Texas congressman. Let's listen to some of the sound of what Mitt Romney had to say. Two years ago, this president faced an economic crisis in an increasingly uncertain world. An uncertain world has been made more... So that was Mitt Romney. I have learned so much. Yeah. You know, I thought the meat and potatoes mm -hmm. was good, but the jokes were just painful to watch. Look. Painful. Look, you can go to, go to any blog, listen to any talk radio station. Americans are the most informed people in the world and the most informed Americans have ever been. Uh, when you're thinking about somebody who's going to be president, sure, you want them to be informed, but you want there to be... A connection to something other than somebody who, f who sounds like they're ready to inherit daddy's company. You know, this is a little bit larger and a little bit more than making a speech uh, that sounds like, well, first of all, we all know this. It's a, Herman Cain was very interesting, too. And, you know, he says, yeah, thank you, you know, Barack Obama. We know the stimulus didn't work. You know, these guys keep telling us stuff that we know. We, it, 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 so, you know, it was, it was a workmanlike speech. It was fine. Um, and uh, then he went and got his oil changed, and they <laughs> turned him up a little bit more, and they came back out. Yeah, you know, Herman Cain has quite a following here. But he I've got to say, he's never going to be elected president because the country would never elect a black guy with no experience. That's right. I, I'll tell you, that would never, ever, <laughs> ever happen. Ever. Ever. But we'd probably get all really, you know, his redistribution of wealth? Pizza for everybody. <laughs> Pizza for everybody. What was he? he was the CEO of Godfather Godf Pizza. Godf Godfather Pizza. Yeah. I am so there. Well, if they can figure out how to get cheese in the crust, then they can figure out how to fix the budget. Look, can they just send Chick Fil A to everybody? <laughs> I ju just send Chick Fil A to everybody and some and some uh, the Girl Scout Thin Mints, and we would be so sheeple. <laughs> I would be sheepled yeah. with some Thin Mints and some Chick-fil-A. I could go for some Thin Mints right now. Yeah, there you go. Are they still selling those cookies? Yeah, the Girl Scouts, the economies hurt the Girl Scouts. They're selling fewer of the cookies. So I think whatever we can do, as long as, you know, some Girl Scout troops, I think, are probably liberals, um, <laughs> help help out the consumers. Yeah, the you shortbread got, sellers. Yeah, totally. Those ones, you know, it's like... Oh, these are the organic ones. These are the, the we're now, you know, it's like the I don't right. know, green tea ones or whatever. I'm sure, God help us all. <laughs> yes. uh, the Chandra Levy killer got like 60 years in prison today. Yes. Yeah. The El Salvadorian. Yeah, that's illegal right. Alien. The illegal alien. What, when did we stop killing people for killing people? When did you just get 60 years? You used to get 60 years for robbing the liquor store. Yeah. And now you have to kill 15 people. Yeah to get killed. There you go. So the other big speech of the day was Ron Paul, the libertarian, mm -hmm. small L libertarian. We have some sound of what Ron Paul mm -hmm. had to say. Mikey, if you will. Patriot Act, we know, is uh, has nothing to do with patriotism. They always name it opposite of what it is. The Patriot Act is literally the destruction of the Fourth Amendment. That's what it's all about. Now, the one thing in Washington they haven't quite understood is what's happening in grassroots America because they assume that everybody loved the Patriot Act. We'll bring it up under suspension and pass it automatically. 
Well, we didn't get a majority vote, but they didn't pass it automatically with a two-third vote, sending a message that this country is waking up and we want to protect our civil liberties as well as our economic liberties. And Ron Paul has quite an intense following here. A lot of young kids, college kids, but they like him. You can tell the difference between the two speeches. Ron Paul was not reading what he was saying. Uh, He's clearly said it before, but he believed it. He was saying it. Um, uh, And the problem with him is, you know, 85% of what he says you can agree with, and then the other 15% is from outer space. (laughs) And, and it kind of affects you. It's like you have a party, and you have to try to figure out who the Martian is. It ruins, you kind of could like the party, but then you're a little afraid. You know what he's like? He's like an old school John Bircher. And we had the president of the John Birch Society on last night. And when he was talking about uh, trade and he was talking about foreign policy, it's like, okay, you make mm-hmm, some sense, mm-hmm. you make some sense, you make some sense. Mm-hmm. And then he starts getting into the one world government conspiracy. And then the skin peels away and then there's the <laughs> reptile alien down in there, you know, kind of starting to, uh, you know, the, the, the problem is, though, is, well, he lost me when uh, in one of the presidential debates when he said that the September 11th hijackers were all lone wolves and that they weren't associated with anyone. You know, there's just the weirdness and then you just can't, but you can't take him seriously, but then his followers. I am so happy I came to CPAC because it's one thing to hear about his followers in the news. It's not um, partisanship. It's not even being a true believer. Uh, there's something wrong there. It's like a religious cult. Well, it is. It's interestingly. It's interestingly kind of, if you've ever been in a big city and you've been, a, you know, you've, it is kind of cultic. Now, I don't know any of them. But even having been on the left, and you can, there's a lot of passion and you know fervor there. Um, it, I've never quite seen that before, and it's uh, it's kind of uh, uh, odd. Maybe Tom Cruise and John Travolta will have some Ron Paul stickers on the back of their car. Well, you don't it's know. You never know. You, I don't know. What don't? Isn't it like math where two cults kind of cancel each other out? <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> Somebody gonna follow me home tonight? Now I don't know. And they're pretty aggressive too. If you say something that they do not agree with, you get booed. You get shouted well, no, down. Look, that's, look, that's. I think that that's fine. And I think that... I, in, I like that part, too. You know, in, in any environment where I want to learn about people, I want to know if the guy next door to me is weird or a Klan member or, uh, you know, a, a, a poly. And I'm not saying that they're all the same there. But it tells me about who... Or if you're gay or uh, who you support. I mean, I want to know what people think. I don't want people to have to hide because they're not going to change, you know, what they think. Do you think the other attendees here at CPAC like the Ron Paul people? Do you think they're kind of looked at as being the outsiders? I, yeah, I, here's one of the problems that I've noticed. You know, this, the straw poll here is very famous, and I'm looking forward to, like, filling it out if I still can. But it now means nothing because it's been hijacked. There's been an organized effort to take it over when a straw poll should really be a reflection of the natural attendees of, of an event. So in a lot of ways, it, it becomes uh, like a circus, frankly. And other events today, uh, be, you know, reinforce the circusy. The rent is too damn high. <laughs> Shoe in the face, man. It really, uh, it's a shame. Um, but for me, I was looking around. Almost, you know what? It's almost like it's almost like a Star Trek convention. Yeah, well, it is. Why We're in a big I'm, convention hall. Why do you hall. think I'm covering my ears right now? <laughs> when I go back out there, I'm going to take my hair back, and they're going to see how committed I really am. Oh yeah, we got the Ron Popeil booth over there. Well, is, is that like the Cuisinarts? Yeah, like the spray-on hair and the food dehydrators. You know, that's what it feels like. It feels like the cow- Twix pause activated. Let's do this. <laughs> Twix are great. Mmm. Twix. Pause like you mean it. <laughs> it's a Star Trek convention with sham wow salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I, I... And they boo Donald Trump. There's a lot of people I uh, like very much here, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I've met some great bloggers, and it's a great way to network. It's fabulous. But something's gone terribly wrong. And I, I'm... And I don't know what's going to happen. I just have no idea. Well, you know, we could nominate the rent is too damn high guy because he now says he's going to run as a Republican. Well, it's because the deficit is too damn high. <laughs> <laughs> that's an, that's an old joke. That's oh, sorry. That's I'm supposed to sit up close. I'm, I'm a professional. I know to speak into the microphone. All right. More with Tammy Bruce coming up next at seven six, forty-six. We Vulcans me. have to sit farther away from the mic. I though. think so. Seven forty-six on Talk Radio seven ninety KABC live from CPAC. The Conservative Uh-oh, Political Action Conference. Have I offended In the someone? nation's capital of Washington, D.C. Causing trouble. On Talk Radio 790. I'm KBC. <laughs>
54 on Talk Radio 790 KABC. The John Phillips Show broadcasting Shamwow. live from Washington, D.C. <laughs> Conservative Political Action Conference. And there is also big news coming internationally out of Egypt, Tammy, where the president of Egypt, Hosni Mubarak, has decided to call it quits. And now there are people dancing in the streets. They're having firework celebrations. They're happy campers. Are they playing the go-go's? Could be. I think they're more money, money people. Money, money. <laughs> uh, you know, here's the problem with that. Uh, Mubarak was the head of a regime, and while he is a clearly a visible um, representation of the regime, the regime is still there. And uh, our issue, of course, is we're loving the idea, the George W. Bush idea, God forbid, of actual spreading of small d democracy, where there's complete suffrage and people have the rule of law and everybody's free. Uh, and so, you know, and Mubarak's the richest man in the world now. We think it's like $70 billion. I'm sure that there's a lot of military men there now who are also the most, the richest military men in the world. Um, but, you know, it's, I don't think, when you think about long term, the issue now is going to have to be whether, and clearly we have no influence or power because we have a dumb no. bastard in the White House. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> don't hold back, Tammy. Johnny, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's true. That's my favorite phrase for him. You know that, Johnny. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, so we have no influence. I think, didn't Hillary just say again today that, you know, she wants their, she wants all the violence to stop or something? I mean, I don't Well, know. everything that they've said, Mubarak and Egypt is just flat out ignored. And they've ignored them in very public ways. So why keep making pronouncements if you know they're going to be ignored? Either you pick a horse, you stand by the horse, and then you're on the same because page. Because it's for us. It's for, it's, for the, he's, it's for the American media and for his base. It's, it's, it's a kabuki dance. They're they're doing a show for everybody here. It's like, oh yes, we are. We we are involved, and we are going to demand that Mubarak leave. Have, you know, three hours after Mubarak has left. I mean, at this point now, it's it really is a dog and pony show, and it, everyone I think now recognizes uh, that we've. It's a, 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 a very dangerous situation, not only for Egypt, frankly, but for us at this point. Do you think when people internationally are watching this unfold on television and they see the celebrations in the streets, they see the fireworks, and they know that our ally, the president, was taken out, do you, how much do you think we lose internationally? Oh, I think we already lost it. I mean, that's why this has happened. When, when we did nothing during the Iranian uh, revolution with, their, with the students there and, and people were being shot in the street and we did nothing, that's when the world said, okay, we're, we're the, there's no adult zone. We can do what we want, when we want, and they know they need to move before 2012. And so while you have this, I think, as a genuine um, uprising by, by the Egyptian people, it really only started in Cairo, and it was spurred along by the Muslim Brotherhood, who is being funded and armed by Iran. This is, you know, look, the Muslim Brotherhood is effectively Hamas. I mean, you, this is a, an entire, the same, we had a Tunisia, you, we've had uh, Lebanon fall again. Um, this is not coincidence. Do you think in terms of domestic politics that people are paying attention to this, or do you think people will only start paying attention to it when gas becomes $8 a gallon? When I was on the airplane, I was on the, the JetBlue coming out, and they, it was just when it, all the stuff was, oh, he's going to resign, you know, on, uh, what was it, Thursday. And I went down to the bathroom specifically to see what was going on. Everyone was watching Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> okay. No one. I was the only one who had the stuff going on in Egypt on the TV. It was they had Wheel of Fortune on. They had you know the ESPN. They had you know uh, Murder She Wrote. Nobody cared. And these are people flying from L.A. to Washington D.C. and they didn't care. So I'm thinking. Look. We also, Americans know that we've got to, that we're not players now. And to watch is frustrating because they know uh, we've got a president who's sucking his thumb. And calling out E at the big board with Vanna White. That's the effect <laughs> of our involvement. Well, if gasoline becomes $8 a gallon, people are going to pay attention real fast. Well, we stopped driving when it hit like 430 and a barrel got to be about $140. That's when Americans stopped and looked. Uh, at this point now, it's embarrassment because of who, because of who we've got and what we've become. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's why CPAC is interesting to a lot of people because they're looking at uh, what the future has to hold, and it's, uh, you know, the deficit's too damn high. <laughs> Tammy Bruce, host of the Tammy Bruce Show, which you can get online at TammyBruce.com. You can also see her on the Fox News Channel. You're always on O'Reilly. I always have you on in the background yeah, when you know, doing these, my show. Yeah, you know, these Vulcaneers are getting hot, so I'm glad this segment's over. <laughs> you can follow her on Twitter at HeyTammyBruce.